from Anshe Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of going somewhere with prayer. We look in Parsha Re'e in Devarim. It says that that it's, it's in that very place that God has chosen to put His name, to rest His name, to have His to have his, shechina, his presence. That's where Shechnotin Rishu Vatashama should always be seeking His Shechina, divine presence, and going there to Jerusalem. Of course, we're not always privileged to go to the temple in Jerusalem and pray there. But there is an idea that when a person is praying, we should be as if we are standing before God. But this idea of Iyun Tfila, this contemplative prayer, prayer that's so good that it, it transports us to a different place. And this is a very difficult concept to achieve. In fact, the Gemara says that that there are there shalosh averos in adam nitzol me'am choyom. There are three sins which a person just cannot be saved from every single day. Ir here ur avera, person has thoughts of sin. Iyun tefila, the person can't concentrate properly in, in prayer. Vavak lashonhara, and also the. Uh, the, the, the little bit of Lashon Hara, something that either is Lashon Hara, the slanderous speech, or something that's similar to it. But, uh, but on the other hand, the Gemara says that in, in Brachos, if a person uh, uh, is, is so focused on their prayers, they may come to uh, have a, a heartache of some sort. So the question is, is Iyun Tfilah, is a focus on the prayers, is that good or bad? So says, well, there's Iyun Tefillah where you're so focused on your prayers that you think, well, based on this mitzvah that I did, God's definitely going to answer my prayers. I'm praying so hard, God's really going to answer my prayers. That's Iyun Tefillah. That's a bad, negative Iyun Tefillah where a person is overly dependent on their righteousness to have their prayers answered. We should approach God from the perspective that if God wants to answer our prayers, He will. He owes us nothing. Now, when it comes to the idea that, that it's difficult to worship God with absolute sincerity every single second and to really concentrate on our prayers all the time, there's a passage in the Yerushalmi that seems to vindicate those who have trouble praying. It seems to say that many of the great rabbis had trouble praying. The Yerushalmi says, the Rabbi Chia Saba, the great Rabbi Chia, uh, he used to say, I never really paid much attention. One time I paid attention and, and I was thinking, is, is this officer or that officer, which politician is more important, uh, the Reish Galusa, the head of the Jewish community? He was thinking about politics. Shmuel said, the great rabbi in Babylonia, he was counting all the birds during prayer. Rabbi Boon says he was counting the various, the, the, le- the layers, the rows of bricks in the, uh, in the building. And Rabbi Matanya says, that he's happy if he, if his head remembers where to bow down when he gets to the modium because he's so distracted he's in a different place. So even though we say in our morning prayers that certain things bring us to the world to come and give us reward in this world, including iyun tefillah, the idea of, of focusing on our prayers, but it seems, it's even many of the great rabbis in the Talmud, they themselves had trouble concentrating. But then many of the commentaries start to wonder, really, is it possible? That the great rabbis of the Talmud couldn't concentrate, could not concentrate in their prayers. So some say, well, they were such great scholars. They were so focused on their learning, it was hard for them to get distracted. But the Akedas Yitzchak, Akedas Yitzchak, uh, he said, it's very hard to imagine that these people, number one, if they were, if they, if they indeed couldn't concentrate, that they would then go and tell everyone that they couldn't concentrate, and then make everyone feel like, oh, well, I don't have to concentrate. The great rabbis couldn't concentrate, so why should I concentrate? That's what's going on here. Now, in fact, many rabbis do take it in the simple sense. The Me'iri, many of the commentaries, Tosfot Arash, the Ritva, many people take the this, most of the main commentaries, take this passage at, at its face value. It's Yerushalmi at the end of the fourth halacha in chapter two of Yerushalmi, Brachos. They take it at face value. They say, look, it means what it says. These rabbis had trouble concentrating. He did Nefesh, one of the commentaries, he says, even though 
They, they didn't have kavana. They didn't repeat the Shemun Esri. We, we, we who don't have the ability to go through a complete Shemun Esri, a complete concentration, we can't say another Shemun Esri because we'll do, we'll do the same thing again and again. The Vilna Gaon says, based on this Yerushalmi, that's the halacha. If you don't have kavana, you don't have kavana. And you didn't have proper intent, and you can't repeat the Shemun Esri. There's nothing you can do about it. Yifei commentary on the Yerushalmi, he starts to give justification. He says, well, wait a second. Maybe this helped them stop their thoughts by focusing on this particular idea. Maybe it helped them focus on their thoughts. I was talking to Steve Katz. He was, uh, reminded me that there's a concept in, the, uh, in meditation that we meditate on a particular object. As we sometimes think about something that helps us focus on this and helps us focus away from bad thoughts, from stray thoughts. But the Akira Yitzchak and many other commentaries have all kinds of interesting interpretations of what these rabbis actually saw, that in fact, they did have incredible prayers that we should only, only dream of. Number one, the idea that, he was, that they were focusing on these different things, it means that they were such analytical minds that as they came to the prayers of, let's say, Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, they started thinking of the different levels and madrigot, the different layers of, uh, of, of where uh, of where a person could achieve in this life, or the tzaddikim, al chasidim, different types of righteous people that we pray for, their, that they should be rewarded, uh, or the tshuva, the bracha of tshuva. And he started thinking about the levels of, of teshuva, who's on a higher level, the person who does tshuva, the person who's always a tzaddik. And as they thought about this, that's what they meant. When Rabbi Chia said that uh, he was thinking of the different officers, he was thinking of people who reach different levels. When the Rabbi Shmuel said that he was thinking of different birds, he was thinking of different levels of the soul that they could achieve. When he was think- when Rabbi Boon said that he was counting the layers of the rose, he was thinking of the layers of a person could achieve in life. And similarly, final Rabbi who said that he was he was he was bowing down, perhaps well, he was he felt bad that he couldn't have the fullest hachnaa, the ultimate giving himself over to God. As he bowed his head, yes, he concentrated, but not to the fullest extent that perhaps is possible at the highest, highest level. Rabbi Tzadok HaKon of Lublin, the Hasidic Rebbe, he says maybe they were counting the, the, not the birds, but they were counting the prayers, which are like birds, counting every word as some of the great Kabbalists counted the words of the prayers. Maybe they were trying to understand the, whether, the different levels, as we said, the Tzil Lamoshen and Tzil Lani. In Tehillim, it mentions sometimes we have a tefillah Moshe, we have high prayers and low prayers. Prayers come, that come from our lowliness, prayers that come from our exaltedness. Maybe that's what it was. Rabbi Zarya of Pano, in his Imrot Tahorot, Mamar Eim Kolchai, Eim Kolchai, he says over there that maybe he was thinking of the different officers in heaven, the Metatron and the Akatriel. He was thinking of the thought versus speech, which they represent. Is it the thought? Is it the, is it the words that are going to get me to my prayers? The birds were like the angels. The wings would usher in the prayers with their angel, with their wings. And he was thinking of the ushering into the prayers. The musia, the, 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 the rose of the building. He was thinking of the hechalot literature, the literature about the heavens above, about the chambers of heaven. And he, that the prayers go through. He could see his prayers migrating through the chambers of heaven way up on high. And the, the one who had trouble, he said he could barely remember when his head went down. He was talking about the idea that as his head went down, he tried to bring down all the blessings that God tries to bestow on us. But this idea that they saw the chambers of heaven reminds me of the Gvar and Chagiga where Rabbi Akiva said, when you get to the chambers of heaven, when you see the, the, the Avnei Shayish Tor, when you see those bricks made out of marble, don't say Mayim Mayim, don't say it's water, it's something else. In other words, there are chambers in heaven. Whatever that means, who knows what it means, but they're alluding to that. These rabbis, when they prayed, they not only imagined they were standing before God, they actually could picture the exact chamber they were in as their prayers were ushered up by the angels to the heavens themselves. One of the Tanoi, one of the Rishonim, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Klonimus, says in the Chusi Tanoim Vaimuroim, in this medieval work, he says, Shamati ki agaonim kosu kushiyah Rav Yehuda mispala mispala bedema there was one Rabbi Yehuda who used to pray, and when he prayed, he could see the ritzpas levena mistameses machnas admos. His tears would, would melt the bricks, perhaps alluding to these very bricks, the bricks in heaven 
the bricks and the chambers of heaven that lead the prayers up to God himself. This, these are the madrigos, these are the levels that the rabbis were on. It says that we should try to get to, to that place, to get to Jerusalem. In our thoughts, we should be taking ourselves to the Mount Moriah. In our thoughts, we should be taking ourselves to the Beis HaMikdash. Shalmata and Shalmala, the one below and the one above. In our thoughts and our prayers, we should be taking ourselves to the chambers of heaven. We should feel the angels ushering up our prayers. We should feel that we're, our prayers have reached so high that we're ready to see the chambers of heaven as our prayers reach the heavens. We're not Rabbi Huda, we're not Rabbi Shmuel, we're not, we're not, we're not the great Tanoi Mamaroyim. Let us hope we can once in a while get a glimpse and a glimmer of the depth to which prayer can go, the distance to which prayer can go. You go there, one day we'll go physically to Jerusalem. In the meantime, let's go in our prayers. Let's travel to another place. Let's bring ourselves to the uppermost levels of heaven in trying to have an encounter with God each day in our Shemur Nesri. Thank you for joining us here at the Anshay Sfarad Beth Lamed Congregation for our discussion of the prayer. Join us each week for a discussion of the Parsha and the various holidays. And thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asb.org.